Hey y'all, welcome to the Double Meal Dad Kitchen. Uh, I'm your host, the Double Meal Dad. Uh, with me today, of course, is Mama Rose, producing the film on the, on the camera. So, uh, the concept of the Double Meal Dad is a simple one. If this is your first time joining us, uh, basically, how can we stretch our dollar farther by buying more of the foods that are on sale and then cooking them the first time through and using those leftovers in, say, a second meal? In essence, the double meal, but changing that flavor profile so we don't feel like we're eating the same things over and over again. So that's the concept of the Double Meal Dad. And today we have a, a really special shout out. I want to just say hello uh, to Miss, uh, Mrs. Marlis Wolfgram. Uh, she runs a great shop called the Front Porch Seamstress. I'm going to put the link on the YouTube channel. Check it out. Please go and like her Facebook page. And uh, if you need an apron, the Double Meal Dad's finally got his own Double Meal Dad apron. So uh, thank you, Miss Marlis, for sending it down to me. I really appreciate it. And... Uh, for uh, trying to make me look good because uh, I need all the help I could get. So when we come back, we are going to make one of the Double Meal Dad's favorite meals. It's my grandmother's lamb stew. So uh, it's Double Meal Dad's grandma stew. And uh, I think you're really going to enjoy it. We've got some leftover lamb, leg of lamb that we're going to use in this. So come on back. We'll see you in a few minutes and we'll take you through the process. Take care, y'all. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Double Meal Dad. So uh, today we're making the DMD grandma's lamb stew and uh, it's going to be a little bit special hopefully I won't get too emotional for y'all but uh, I'm using my grandmother's pot I have no idea this pot's got to be 40, 50 years old so I'm going to use my grandma's pot for making this stew I'm going to get this over here and we'll get this started in just a second very simple, we do not need a lot of ingredients three carrots one medium white or yellow onion or a couple small ones. I happen to have some small ones. They were on special at the grocery store. So I'm going to cut up a couple small ones. We need about a cup of cracked wheat. Now you'll find this usually kind of in the, uh, the international aisle, they may call it at your grocery store, or the ethnic aisle, uh, usually where the Middle Eastern uh, foods are found. It's just called cracked wheat. And we're going to add this at the end. So we're not going to need it right up front so we can get this all started. And then we're going to use some leftover lamb. Now before I get to that, if you can't find cracked wheat, another substitute you can use for it is just some russet potatoes. So you can cut up some, when my grandmother didn't have that around, she'd peel up some russet potatoes and she'd put that in the, in the soup. So we need some kind of starch, we're going to use the wheat, uh, but if you can't find it, then uh, you can go ahead and, and substitute potatoes. And then we roasted a lamb on our barbecue on a spit. And uh, I'll put the recipe for that out there. It's really simple. You just cut some slits in the lamb, put some little shanks of garlic. You can see some of that leftover garlic. Some little cloves of garlic in throughout the lamb. Put it on the spit. I rub it in olive oil and just put some oregano on there. But I'll put the recipe on there. Then I slow roasted it for a couple of hours. We ate that with some rice. So that was meal number one. So now we're going to take those leftovers and we're going to make our second meal out of it. So we're going to start by uh, cutting up this onion here. So I'm just got this onion started, I'm going to go ahead and start cutting it up. And uh, then once we've got the onion cut up, and we want this kind of nice and chopped because we don't want big chunks. You know, this isn't like we're making our, our four soup bag. You know, this isn't, uh, we're not doing a, a broth or a stew here. We're, we're actually, we want this to be so that it's not, you know, we don't want big chunks in our mouth while we're eating this in the stew. Uh, of course, if you like that, if you you know if you like to have a big piece of onion in your stew, <laughs> this is this all it's the double meal dad is all about, you know, enjoying what you like. So I'll cut up one more onion here. And for those of you, this is maybe your first time looking or seeing the double meal dad. Here's our little trick. It's our four soup bag. So we take that kind of last layer of onion and skin off of there, and uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put that in a bag that we've labeled four soup. We put that in our freezer, we just keep it in the freezer and we bring it out every time we're cutting vegetables. I'm going to do the same thing with the carrots here. So I just wash the carrots. I don't peel my carrots because, you know, they say that all of the good vegetables, all of the good uh, vitamins and everything are in the skin. So if you're, if you're taking the skin off, you're really taking those, uh, all those vitamins out of there. You know, the beta carotene and all the good stuff that's in carrots. Again, good for your soup. So go ahead and throw that in there. And, uh, you know, for me, when I make stew, we're going to be sitting, it's going to be sitting on the stove for a long time. It's going to be slow cooking. 
I go ahead and I make my vegetable broth, which that's the last ingredient we're going to have here is we're going to need about four or five cups or a little bit more of this couple quarts of uh, vegetable broth. We're going to use up all of our vegetable broth, so I'm going to go ahead and make some uh, fresh broth here. All right, I'm going to cut this up. We'll come back. We'll start putting it all together, and uh, we'll see you in a couple minutes. So see you in a few minutes on the Double Mill Day. Hey y'all, just chop, finishing chopping up the vegetables. I'm going to get this uh, last carrot cut up here. Now, while I'm doing that, I'm going to pause real quick. Go ahead and get this heat going on this pan here. And I'm going to finish cutting up these veggies. Get a little bowl going here. And we're just looking for, you know, quarter inch, eighth inch of a piece of... Uh, carrot here. I didn't get too thick of a carrot. If you get down or if you get a carrot that's too thick, you can cut it in half. The beauty of cutting a carrot in half like that is it stays a little bit, you know, uh, flatter when you're cutting through it. It doesn't move around as much. So I'm going to go ahead and get that started. And then now that we've got our pot up to temperature, we're going to go ahead and put some olive oil in the pot here. So we go ahead and get good, good helping, maybe a tablespoon or or two of olive oil, and we're going to go ahead and get those onions and carrots started. So that's the base. That's how we get this started. Remember, our lamb is already cooked, so we don't need to really brown it. I'm going to put some salt and pepper in here. The salt will help the onions start to fall apart, sweat a little bit, and come out here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our lamb, and we're going to come back here, and we're just going to try to cut it in some chunks. Now. I like to do more of a, lar a little bit larger than a bite-sized chunk, maybe about, let's see, that's a little over an inch long on that side, but that's going to be good because, you know, you're going to put your spoon in here and you're going to be able to, the lamb is going to be so tender, you're just going to be able to pull it apart. Now, if you got stuff that's a lot of fat, you can trim that fat off as you go through there, but um, I don't want people to have to cut, you know, their soup, so I'm going to cut it in just a little bit larger than bite-sized pieces. And most importantly, remember I said this is the leg of lamb, so here's our leg bone. So even though I'm going to cut the meat off of the leg bone, I'm going to pull all this meat off it, I am going to throw the lamb bone into the soup here because there's so much good flavor. And what will actually happen is all of this meat will start to fall off of the bone. So I'm going to try to pull as much off so I can have some nice... Uh, chunks, you know, for uh, for the meat. Now, if you can't get lamb, or there's no lamb available, I'm going to take that bone, and I'll, I'll throw that in there as soon as I get my uh, my veggies going here. If you can't get lamb, a lot of the grocery stores have, uh, you know, have soup meat, or you could even use a, uh, a pot roast. You could do something like that. You want to stay away from meats that are going to be tough if you, if you cook them. Um, you know, not long enough, like uh, like a round roast or a rump roast. Those really need a lot of time to fall apart to get tender. But uh, but you can certainly use it if you don't take that much time as, as far as cooking in here. So make it your own. I find lamb tastes the best, so I'm gonna stick with the lamb recipe. All right, let me finish cutting this up. When we come back, I'll throw the rest of it together, and uh, we'll get going. All right, see you in a few minutes. All right, y'all. Here we go. We got our. Onions and our carrots, we're getting some nice color on them. We don't want to overcook them or get them too caramelized. So I'm going to go ahead and stop right there. I'm going to go ahead and throw in my uh, lamb bone and uh, my chunk lamb that I've cut up here. And we're just going to put, remember these are cooked, so we're not really trying to brown them or anything like that from a standpoint of where you would have a raw meat. Now, you know, I get a lot of questions. Double meal dad, we're, you know, again, the point here is we're trying to use meat. So if I was going to go buy a leg of lamb and put it on a spit, and, um, you know, maybe I buy a four or five pound lamb because there's only four people in the family, why not buy an eight or a nine pound lamb, especially if it's on special? And, and we're going to use that leftover meat. Could you use raw lamb in this? Absolutely. In that case, we're going to want to saute it up a little bit more. We're going to want to make it... We want to bring those flavors out, and that's what we're going to do. But it's going to cook, so we'll go ahead and get through this. All right. We're going to go ahead and now add our, our broth, our stock. 
and we just want to cover this with the broth or stock. And look at that. Oh, it's going to be so good. So there's all our vegetable broth. Now, for those of you who are new to the Double Meal Dad, here's kind of what our four soup bag looks like. I've got that started. I'm going to go ahead and turn that on and get that up high to temp. It's going to be the same process. We're going to get that going here. Okay, here we go now, our soup. That's basically the beginning of it. One more thing Double Meal Dad forgot to mention is peeled whole tomatoes. we got to add some richness and some flavor in here. So, apologize I forgot to, to mention this, but we're going to add a can of this. So when I come back, we'll open this up, and then we're going to pull this down to simmer, and we'll finish it up. All right, we'll see you in a second. Okay, y'all, so when I was giving you the ingredients, again, I'll have the recipe listed below here, but I forgot to mention we want these whole peeled uh, tomatoes. So we're just going to go ahead and add these in here. Now, a little trick is I like to kind of squeeze them up, you know, get a little of that extra juice and just tear them up in there. It's a lot of fun. Just be careful because you don't want to go shooting this all over the kitchen. So uh, you can use, uh, I'll go over here just so you can see this a little bit better. Here's my little plate. Uh, I'll go ahead and squeeze it in there and that way I'm not uh, messing up our kitchen here in the Double Mill Dad kitchens. And uh, we're just going to add all this juice and then we're going to bring this up to a really good boil. And then once we've got it up to a boil, we're going to uh, we're going to turn it down and let it simmer. And we're going to let it simmer, you know, for a good four or five hours. And right before, about 20, 30 minutes before, maybe 40 minutes before we uh, we're ready to serve it, we're going to add our wheat because we don't want our wheat to get too thick and we don't want it to absorb too much of the liquid. We just want it to get soft. We want the flavor to be in there. And that's it. I mean, just a few ingredients. Now, I'll tell you a funny story here. I had heard or I saw this recipe. So my grandmother on my biological mother's side is, um, is Assyrian. So really old um, culture. Uh, for those of you who maybe have read some of the old, uh, old Testament or something like that, you'll read about the Assyrians. Ashurbanipal, the 10,000 columns, world's largest library at one time. Uh, this recipe comes from their culture. And I heard, uh, I heard uh, uh, Elton Brown on the Food Channel talking about, you know, that this was a Roman type dish. He made something very similar to this, and he called it a Roman dish. And you got to remember, the Romans basically conquered almost the entire world. They were one of the largest empires, and of course, they conquered Assyria and Persia and all of the those places in the Middle East. So uh, they were very good at incorporating, and uh, thank God they did. They were very good at, at bringing back all these foods and all these meats and, and all different kinds of spices and flavors and using them in different meat, meals. So this is a very, very old recipe and a very simple recipe to make. Uh, so I hope you get a chance to try it. Alright, I'm going to add this right into the pot and uh, we're set to go. That's all there is. To, that's all she wrote. Uh, that'll give it a nice rich color, a nice big red color in there. The meat will start to fall apart. And uh, I'm just going to wait till this comes to a nice warm uh, boil, and then I'm going to turn it down really low. I'm just going to let it sit and cook all day. So when we come back in a few hours, we'll add up our wheat, and then we'll serve it up with some nice. Uh, we want some nice sourdough bread, or really goes good with some good French bread. We'll get some nice French bread or some sourdough, and we'll just dip it in there and eat it. All right. See y'all in a few minutes. Have a great day. Okay, y'all, welcome back. All right, this has been simmering for about five hours. Look how nice and thick, and that uh, meat is all soft. And look at this, we pulled off all that meat off the bone. We put that back in the, back in the pot. Now we're gonna take a cup of our cracked wheat. We got it turned up just a little bit now. Because we want this meat to get, this wheat to get uh, nice and soft. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that go. And uh, we'll be back in about 30 to 45 minutes, and we'll be ready for soup. We'll see you in a little bit. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Double Meal Dad. All right, we're ready to put our uh, grandma's lamb stew together. So we're going to open a nice bottle of the Clone 7. This is a really great bottle of wine at a really reasonable price point. It's less than $15. If you can find this Clone 7 Cabernet Sauvignon, this happens to be a 2010. It's a... Uh, Mm. 
Really good. For a $15 bottle of wine, you can't beat it. Okay, let me show you what's happened here. So, I'm going to ladle up some stew. I'm going to show you how rich. I'm going to come right over there to the camera and show you what, what's happened. You know, we only put a cup of that weed in there, and I think some of you may have been think, looking at that going, wow, that doesn't look like a lot of wheat compared to how much fluid we have in there. But look at how that wheat has puffed up. Uh, I let it sit for about an hour. Uh, like I said, it's ready to go after about 20 or 30 minutes. But the longer you let that sit, the puffier it'll get. Now, I don't want it to cook the whole time I've got the stew, because otherwise it'll just kind of become mushy and it won't really be very good. But now it's nice and it's puffed up, and that's what really gives this stew its flavor. Like I said, you could do it with potatoes if you don't, if you can't find the wheat. But that's really the difference maker in this stew, and that's really what makes it great. So uh, let me just give myself a little juice here for a little dipping, and then uh, you know we're just going to either cut up some uh, sourdough bread if you like sourdough. We'll cut that up here. Put that aside. You could use. You don't have sourdough. You could just use regular white bread or, or wheat bread. French bread is delicious. My grandmother uh, used to put what she called boiba. It was her name for the big uh, greenish yellow banana peppers. She used to put that in some French bread with some butter, and she would dip that in it. Really spicy. That that banana pepper. The ones she would grow in her yard. They could get really spicy. What I like the best is some of this naan bread. So if you can find naan bread, that's just like an Indian bread. Goes good with this big hearty soup. And uh, I'm just going to try some of that. Oh my gosh. Oh, I forgot a spoon. Well, let me grab a spoon real quick. Mama Rose is probably cringing right now. Give myself a spoon here. That lamb has become so tender in there. Some of that wheat. Oh, just brings back great memories of sitting around at my grandmother's house. Big bowl of soup. You know, it's a cold winter day out there. This is really easy for you to make. I hope you get a chance to try it. Um, I wish you all the best. Uh, thanks for watching the Double, Deal, Double Meal Dad. Don't forget to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channels. And uh, go ahead and send us some comments. Let us know if you try our recipes. And uh, let us know how they turned out. And uh, also... Share some of your ideas and some of the things that you've done in those recipes to change them up and really make them your own. Okay. Have a great day, everybody. We love you. Take care.